distinguished uh, youth delegate from the Netherlands. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, distinguished delegates, honored guests. During my childhood, my village was the world for me. I grew up in a little town in the south of the Netherlands. It was a place where people were connected to each other, where neighbors were part of the family, and nobody was excluded. When I played with friends, it did not matter whether they came from a rich or poor family, whether they had dark or blonde hair. In my eyes, we were different, but all equal, and she had similar dreams. Now, many years later, the world has become my village. My friends no longer live in the same street, but live in Kenya, the Philippines, India, and Hong Kong. Yet, for me, it still does not matter whether they are a doctor or farmer, or what is their gender or skin color. What counts for me are the commonalities we share, rather than what sets us apart. Despite our obvious differences in cultures and upbringing, we have similar dreams, ideals, and aspirations for a better future. We, young people, are not only united in a way the world has never seen before, but also have ambitions that go far beyond our own careers and communities. I believe that those ambitions will soon become reality. Take, for example, my 24-year-old friend, Augustine. He was born in northern Kenya, and his childhood was marked by the death of his father in a tribal war. He and his family struggled to survive. Now, years later, he has established a youth-led NGO, which he hopes will bring finally peace to his community. Over the past years, I have talked to thousands of youngsters in the Netherlands and traveled to all corners of the world. I debated with Dutch students and participated in youth empowerment programs in the slums of Mumbai. Talked to people infected with HIV in Nairobi and worked on rebuilding local fishing communities in the Philippines. Everywhere I came across young people like Augustine, who already have a profound impact on their societies. I met Sebastian, Lina, Mashaba, and Thies. I met Tarindu, Jonas, Abhishek, and Joy. And I met many more. All of them wish to help build a fairer and more equal society. Yet, at the United Nations, we only have a few youth representatives here. I ask, I ask all of you, if millions of young people have such an impact on their society, then why is it? Why is it that so often our voices are not being heard? Why is it that young people continue to be underrepresented in decision-making progresses? Dear Chair, I am one. I am one out of 1.8 billion youngsters. One. One out, of, one out of so many whose voice have never been heard. I am privileged to be standing here before you today, to have my voice heard, but I am just one. And that is not enough. The youth of today wants to be heard. And if it were up to me, 2015 would be the starting point for a new world. A world in which young people have equal access and opportunities to help shape the future they want. This is the moment, the moment to put young people at the center of the post-2015 agenda. It is time to finally bridge the gap between young people and the United Nations by ensuring meaningful and inclusive youth participation. This means not only the educated youth in capital cities, but also the mar marginalized youth who make up the vast majority of the youth population in the world. Far away from our realities, far away from New York, there's a world of young people whose voice has never been heard. As youth representative and a citizen of my global village, I feel it is my duty to connect young people from all walks of life with the UN. My grandfather. My grandfather used to say to me, actions, not words. Therefore, I do not only stand here today with nice words, but also have an action plan. Recently, I launched the Building Bridges project, a project that will take me on a bicycle from Amsterdam to Cape Town. I will explore the post-2015 agenda from a different perspective, a huge perspective. This way, I hope to contribute to making this agenda more inclusive. At the very same time, I hope that you also take the advice of my grandfather by heart and start acting rather than talking. A, go a good start would be that all of you, all member states, will include youth representatives and their delegations to the 17th United Nations General Assembly. Dear Chair, I believe that there can be no peace, no prosperity, 
and no progress without the full and equal participation of young people all around the world. Thank you. I thank the representative of young people of the Netherlands.